Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to uh, Thursday, 15th of February, year of our Lord 2024, through the King James Translation Holy Bible in one year. Study continues. We're going to pick it up today in Genesis 16. We're continuing studying the life of Abraham. So let me move my face out of here and let's get to the study, shall we? Okay. So, you don't need to see me. You need to see the Word of God. It's what you need to see. Okay, so we found out in... Uh, in uh, Let's go here to... We are utilizing the King James Bible Online website, okay? Um, so, in just to try to, let me get a brief look here at 15, what we covered here real quick. After the king, uh, we, we learned that Lot and his nephew had to separate one from another uh, previously because they both had so many possessions and they started to kind of, the land was too small for him at that point. The Lord had blessed him. So Abraham said to Lot, his nephew, hey, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Uh, let's not fight over resources. We're brethren. The whole land is before us. So Lot ended up picking an area uh, in the town of towns of Sodom and Gomorrah which were very pleasant but uh, sadly turned out to be not a good choice but uh, anyway <laughs> we we take it from there so uh, what ended up happening was the kings at that time all these little towns and areas had kings and uh, there was one main guy who was the king of Elam Elam was like the main nation at that time, probably even bigger than Egypt, although all you usually hear about today is Egypt, but Elam in its time, and this time, was a huge deal. It was like uh, United States is right now, probably, or Rome even. It, it compassed uh, the area of modern-day Iraq and Iran and Jordan and um, probably a little bit more than that. Back in back in this day, so so the guy who was over that kingdom of Elam was over all these other little smaller kingdoms who rebelled against him after putting up with his rule for twelve years. In the thirteenth year, they rebelled. He came after him, and he he and his forces ended up taking Abraham's nephew Lot, and they they didn't kill him, but they took his family. And they took all his possessions and they departed. Abraham gathered, gathered all the servants in his born in his house. And uh, these were people that that were trained. Uh, and they were actually such a good military force. They were able to beat this king who had kidnapped uh, all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah and, uh, and uh, returned Lot and his family, even... Uh, rescued their goods. Okay. Um, so here in chapter. So then. Uh, actually it was a miraculous. There's In the natural there's probably no way. A guy. Uh, one lone guy. Even if he had 300 people with him. Which he did. Um, would beat. Um, Chedeo Lamer. Leomer. I'm trying to say the name correctly who was king at that time, over Edom. But he was able to rescue Lot and his family. It tells us of a person who was not involved in the conflict from a town named Salem, which is translated as peace. It informs us in the book of Hebrews. Uh, this person was symbolic of Christ. Uh, uh Higher, you know, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's not on either side. He's over both sides. <laughs> okay. The name of the priest who came forth was called Melchizedek. And no doubt I I am delinquent in that. I have failed to look up the meaning of that name in the original language, which I really should have done by now. Uh, 
and I apologize for not doing so. But anyway, let's move on, and me, I'll get pick, I'll try to pick that up later at a later time. Um, so we're here. We are. Um, it brought us all the way to chapter sixteen. So Abraham recognizes this Melchizedek person as a holy person who was consecrated to God, and Abraham. He was not named Abraham at that time. He was uh, still using his original birth name, which was Abram. Um, gave this person a tenth of all his spoils. So, because he recognized this person was from God. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So if we can go on here, let's go 16, it says, Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Now, I was trying to think of her name earlier. I think I said it was Hagai. <laughs> That's a prophet later on. But this lady's name was Hagar. She was Egyptian, okay, which is kind of a big deal. She might have been one of the people that was given to Sarai and Abraham when they left Egypt. Okay, we all know about that, where they entered into Egypt and they kind of lied and said, hey, we're brother and sister. And they're, you know, of course, their husband and wife. And Pharaoh took her into his palace and treated Abraham very well for her sake and gave him cattle and servants and stuff, thinking that he was her brother. But God plagued the house of Pharaoh and kind of made it clear that he better give back this lady to Abraham because she was his wife. And Pharaoh kind of uh, became aware that she was his wife and angrily sent Abraham, Abraham away with all the goods he'd given him, though, and said, hey, get out of here. I, You know, you, you got me in trouble with God. You know, <laughs> I don't want you here anymore. So they left. Uh, so that, so this lady Hagar might have been one of the people that he that was given to him at that time, and um, so Abraham and Sarai um, wanted a child, and they, and Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And, Ab and Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. So at this point, they were thinking, we're never going to have children. Okay, That would prove to be wrong, but... That's the conclusion they came to. Later on, God visited them and said, you're going to have a child and his name's going to be Isaac. And and Sarah laughed at, the, at that thought. She said, shall I have a child? Uh, it ceased with me to be after the manner of women. And my Lord Abraham, he's old. We're, how can we have children? You know, because he was 90, I think he was 99 years old at that time. Turned out Abraham lived to be 175 years and Sarah lived like close to that so anyway it wasn't long uh, so uh, Hagar did have a have a child they named him Ishmael and it wasn't long before Sarai and Hagar uh, started not getting along and so Hagar uh, kind of uh, ran out of there in, uh, in fear of Sarai because Sarai was being really hard to her. And uh, the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness and the fountain in the way to Shur. So there was a, you know, there's natural fountains that exist. And so she found one of these. She had her son with, with her. And uh, he said, that, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. 
And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, and his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. I think that's a pretty accurate description of some of these Arab nations that came from Ishmael. <laughs> uh, so no further comment on that right now. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the, the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. Behold, it's between Kadesh and Bered. Now, that, these facts, these little facts that are given from time to time in this text are true, were true at the time of the writing. They may not be true all these years later. Okay, but anyway, going on to chapter 17, we see uh, when the Abraham was 90 years old and nine the lord appeared to abraham and said unto him i am the almighty god walk before me and be thou perfect so we all have no matter how old we are how long we've been a christian or have or you know believe in god or haven't believed in god we're expected to strive towards perfection and even abraham even god said to abraham at this point when he was 90 and 9 years old, 99 years old, walk before me, be thou perfect. And, he, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And as we know, all probably know, Abraham is the father of the Jews, the Jewish nation. And uh, they bless the whole world by being the progenitors of Christ. Christ was a Jew. And the Lord goes on here. I'll just take it down to verse 6. He says, And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, everlasting, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So let those verses sink in and set the stage for the rest of the book of Genesis, really. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Now I'm using thou's and thee's because I'm reading from the King James translation here. Okay, we're down to verse 10. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me, you, and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Okay, that the sign of circumcision still exists today in many cultures. Um, most Western cultures, as a matter of fact, as a symbol uh, of our relationship to God that we're submitted to God. Okay, and God said, and um, he told Abraham, everyone that comes in who's going to live in your house got to be circumcised or else they got to leave. He says, because that's my covenant. That's a sign of my covenant. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Verse 15. Verse 16 says, and I will bless her and give her, give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face. Back here a few verses, so I skipped over it. Where is it? It says, oh, verse 5 says, Neither shall thy name. So Abraham has his name changed at this time. When he's 99 years old, his God says, I want to call you Abraham because the name Abraham means father of many nations. He says, 
uh, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Verse 4, thou shalt be a father of many nations. Verse 5, neither shall thy name be any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Okay, so let's go. Let's move it along to chapter 18. He says, The Lord appeared to him in the plains of Mamre as he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. So, now this is a very interesting chapter because the Lord comes to him um, in the form of two or three men and uh, I don't know what they look like exactly it would be great if we had a videotape of what happened but we don't <laughs> we have this written record uh, so the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre as he sat in the tent door of the heat of the day and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo three, three men father, son and holy spirit stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said my lord singular interesting he didn't say my lords <laughs> interesting if now i have found favor in thy sight pass not away i pray thee from thy servant let a little, let a little water i pray you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a young, uh, fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it, and he took butter and milk. So he's doing, he's going around making a meal for these guys, for the Lord, and the calf which uh, appearing to him in the form of three men, but Abraham recognized where they were, who they were, and where they came from, and he took. Uh, Elsewhere in the New Testament, it says we should be careful to entertain strangers. So you never know one of they might be uh, an angel. And that's actually happened. People have, an angel have visited people, and the people have been unaware, it says. So anyway, he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Her Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abram went with them to bring them on the way. Now we all know what happened next. Um, I think it might be best if I just go ahead and read the rest of the verses here. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation? And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. Now he will command his children and his household 
after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. So Abraham has a heart for these people. And it's interesting, uh, when the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah were saved in the previous chapter by Abraham and his people, um, even today a lot of the liberal anti-Christian people are able to do what they do because of the freedoms that Christians have fought and died for previous to them so it's ironic in certain ways um, and and Abraham helped these people but instead of stopping and realizing this man of God was able to save us against this great nation they just continued in their sinful ways no self reflection whatsoever with these people and that's the way it is today with these liberal people just kind of unconscious unconcerned about God God's like last place in their lives. They just want to live their life the way they want to live it without the counsel of God. And without the God, they don't want God to be their father. Uh, it's beyond stupid, really. It's, it's uh, following Lucifer and it's following the devil who, who is beyond stupid. Okay. Um, so Abraham goes back and forth with the Lord and, 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 and finally it says, uh, and he said, "Oh, let not." And he goes. And he brings it down to ten people. And he says, "Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet, but this once. Peradventure, ten shall be found there." And, and he said, "I will not destroy it for ten's sake." And the Lord went his way, as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. So, next time. Starting in chapter 19, we're going to cover the facts concerning the judgment and destruction of the land of Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, Lot's time there. Okay, so uh, God bless you today for joining me in this study. May the Lord richly bless you. I'll see you next time.